Welcome back everyone to Red Desk. I'm your host, Mr. USSR Lever, but we gotta talk about another lesson for the CPSU. On December 28th, 1987, an editorial in Pravda reported that the Soviet Union had over 30,000 unofficial organizations at the time. These organizations openly promoted anti-communist propaganda, called for the establishment of opposition parties and independent trade unions. Instead of providing social guidance, these publications consist constantly agitated for freedom, democracy, and human rights. Meanwhile, the party lost control over the media. Gorbachev, as general secretary, opened the door wide for westernization and the fragmentation of the Soviet Union. By using mass media to permeate ideology, two radio stations were established in Western Europe, aimed at the Soviet Union, Radio Free Europe, and Radio Liberty, broadcasting daily in six languages, covering international events, Soviet and Eastern European affairs, and promoting the achievements, lifestyle, and values of Western society. Funding was provided to various research institutions to devise strategies to undermine the Soviet people's sentiments towards leaders Lenin and Stalin. Anti-Lenin and anti-Stalin works were flooded newspapers, film stations, TVs, and uh, uh, films. They incited the Soviet people, suggesting the Bureau of Lenin's body. The West praised Gorbachev's reformist thinking, aiming to weaken and dismantle the parties and socialist regime's credibility while propagandizing the so-called beautiful life in the West and the superiority of capitalism. Gorbachev was not, only, not only became complacent, but also encouraged acceptance of Western influence. At a Politburo meeting in 1985, Gorbachev stated, Soviets must have direct contact with foreigners. Don't be afraid, then everyone will see the world is vast, colorful, and varied. In December of 88, the Soviet Union ceased jamming Western radio stations, which had been deemed subversive, and allocated 4 million rubles to import Western press for public sale. This further empowered the West's offensives against the Soviet Union. Before and after 1990, the trend of abandoning socialism and Soviet society reached its peak. Many political forces decided to turn their backs on socialism and move directly to capitalism. This perfectly aligned with the Western definition of effective propaganda. Propaganda to guide the target in the direction we designate while making the target believe the direction is chosen by them. In six years, the press achieved what even the most elite European armies could not accomplish with their fire and swords in the 40s. The army and top-notch technical equipment but lacked one thing, millions of publications carrying germs. And the horror of it all. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, Republic of Vietnam, come on. Come on, guys. They will not accept. Well, we're not going to let them have our stuff anymore, then. Oh, we can do that. It's fine. We can do it fine. It's fine. Uh, we're still here in South Africa. Got a couple of comments to go through. Most of it just like whether we should choose um, either leader down here. Uh, you know, either Andreeva or Zyuganov. So, uh, personally, I does, does not really matter to me for this campaign. Um, but, let's see. Uh, but, we're going to do in the Soviet Army. And I think, overall, there, there was a lot of, uh, someone made a comment, a lot of upvotes at the time of this recording, of course, to go down, expand the Ogas, compared to everything else, so, we did the Brezhnev economic policy, and there's also support for us to do Brezhnev anyways, actually quite a bit, too. Um, so, Comrade Brezhnev, well, uh, well, not the brightest of minds, so there's some good ideas under him uh, that were proposed, or used. We can for sure find some policies have some value and implement them, so, Brezhnev era economics. So, so you can have influence will increase, so, um, but there's also a lot of support for Oh, uh, it was Andreeva as well, so. Oh, we can actually, okay, so thank God we can edit these templates. Oh my God, these are so bad. Truth be told, though, I assume this is just a motorized division because we have so much hardness and only so much armor. Heavy infantry, infantry fighting vehicles. What if we just remove that and just threw on another motorized uh, heavy infantry? Now we're 17. Why are we using this? Why don't we just use motorized artillery or rocket artillery? Or even self uh, this one. Self repelled, yeah. Professional carriers. Overall hurts armor a little bit. Motorized artillery, hurts with armor by a little bit, heavy infantry. And. Toad artillery, ah, that's why. Heavy infantry. Hurts our armor a little bit, but it does give us a lot more soft attack. The same hardness. You actually get more organization too, barely. Slightly worse recovery rate. Armor, like I said, goes down. Soft attack goes radically up. Heart attack goes radically up. Air attack goes up. Uh. Literally, 30% more, 33% more defense. Tons more breakthrough. What do we have here? Self-prepared anti-air, it's not bad. Attack helicopters, engineers. 
Um, towed artillery, I mean, it doesn't slow us down at all. Actually, this speeds us up, if anything. Motorized artillery. Uh, 47. Why would we choose, why would we choose towed artillery company over motorized artillery? Production costs 102. I mean, it's more expensive to make. Transport helicopters. How about rocket artillery? Eh. And what about... Maintenance might not be bad. Field hospitals. Trickle back. Recon drones, huh? More fuel. Arch organization. Armor, armor. No, let's save that for now. So that's not half bad. But we also have this tank division down here too. And I want to make sure that this tank division is okay. 24 combo width is not bad. I forget a good tank division template, truth be told. Um, oops. Wait, is this what we're actually using? No. Tank. Infantry fighting vehicles. Oh, it's right here. Duh. Main battle tank and heavy infantry. Well... If we do that, we speed it up a little bit more. Because right now, each one gives you a certain amount of stuff. Fuel capacity. Heavy entry. Instead of help. Oh, no, she So if I get rid of these guys, I don't mind maintenance. Logistics is okay. We could use heavy infantry, that's fine. Um, but beyond just heavy infantry, it's not bad. Uh, let's see, designer. I think about thirty would probably be pretty good overall for tank design. Um, needs a little more armor here, maybe. Yeah, because this one gives you... This actually hurts your armor and speed. Even this gives you slightly more armor. 30. So, overall, you get more soft attack. A little more. More hard attack. Quite a bit more. More anti-air. More defense. Way more better breakthrough. A little bit more armor. Better piercing. More speed. More HP. Way more HP. A little better organization. I like that so far. Um... I searched armor a little bit, but more soft attack would be nice, so propelled our anti-air. Hmm. Attack helicopters, absolutely. Regun companies are okay. R drones sound like more fun. Transport rocket artillery. Hmm. Gives you 13 more breakthrough. This does not give you any more breakthrough, which I don't like. Let's keep that for now, and run with that. Any upgrades? Oh, sorry, I was taking so long with this. I just I want to make sure we do everything right. Oh. Oh, we ran out of city, so. Hey, nice job. You won another battle, which is great. Give a little more time to recover and whatnot. Are we missing anything here? Oh. Oh my God. Guns. Self-propelled artillery. Attack helicopters. So we need way more guns. Mm -hmm. Just in case we can. Uh, part 6. The Soviet propaganda machine was once considered one of the most powerful and influential in the world. However, propaganda also needed to evolve according to the demands of each stage of social development, including the cultural advancements in the West. The Soviet Union had not hindered new music and fashion trends. Instead of reinforcing and develop these trends, it would have demonstrated that it was a world leader not only in space, but also in these fields. Shortly after Gorbachev became the General Secretary of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union in 1985, Alexander Yakovlev, known as the architect of Perestroika, father of Glasnost in the Soviet Union, an influential spy for the U.S., was quickly promoted ahead of the Central Propaganda Department. Under his influence and direction, many of the leading and influential newspapers of the Soviet Union were replaced with new leadership that supported Gorbachev's reform policies. 
Under Yakovlev's control of the press, the processes of undermining the Soviet Union in the late 80s did not resemble class conflict, but rather a subtle change in the awareness and thoughts of individuals. Supported by Gorbachev, Yakovlev systematically undermined the cultural foundations of Soviet people by gradually eroding these foundations. For Soviet youth, listening to domestic music or wearing uh, Soviet clothes while strolling would diminish the prestige. Most Soviets at the time, influenced by the press under the Glasnost policy, desired a life like in the West. They achieved this, but eventually realized that genes were not at the core values of life. Doctrines, foremost among the Marxism and Leninism, were the far beyond even forgotten, when the spark of revolution cannot ignite among the youth. I mean, could you actually win here? Yeah, I, mean, I guess if you can win. So we're coming back, this with decent uh, things here. Decent, decent units, I should say. There you go. Invasion of Afghanistan. This morning, American NATO forces launched an intervention in Afghanistan, escalating the ongoing conflict between the Taliban and the government. There we go. This operation was initiated in response to the growing threat that Taliban extremism poses for the region and the world, as well as the immediate failure of the civilian government. Reports show that airstrikes targeted key Taliban uh, strongholds and infrastructure across the country, followed by deployment of ground troops. The American High Command stated that this operation will restore peace and stability in combat terrorism, supposedly. As American forces make their way, the international community is uncertain of the long-term implications of this intervention. Finally, bring peace or will be the graveyard of the end of the empire. First the British, then the Soviets, and now the Americans. Look at this. I'll, I'll be honest, when I saw this, I'm like, there's a face here, here's an eye, another eye, and a mouth. Give it one more time to recover more. There you go. Strength of 74%, it's not bad. Not great, but not bad. The final. Our finale. Along with the dismantling the leadership role of the party, Gorbachev ruthlessly destroyed the party's organizational system within the military. To implement democratization, adjustments to the military's organizational structure involved gradually reducing the political departments at all levels and eliminating around 80,000 political officers, particularly the political director in his armed forces. The regulations on the work of the armed forces organized by the Communist Party of the Soviet Union prohibited party organizations and agencies from interfering in the administrative work and command, military command. Additionally, Gorbachev directed the abolition of the Central Committee's political verification mechanism and the political directorate's oversight of promoted officers. In October of 1990, the Soviet Union enacted the Law on Public Organizations, which stipulated that military personnel were not bound by the resolution of political parties. By early 91, the military's administrative bodies underwent comprehensive restructuring, transforming the party's political departments into agencies under government direction. The Soviet Army's uh, political directorate was renamed the main director of the armed forces following a path of military nationalization. Simultaneously, the Soviet military gradually downplayed the study of Marxist-Leninist theory and socialist ideology, removing political education content. In June of 91, to implement new political thinking, Marxist-Leninist schools within military branches, military districts, and army groups were abolished and replaced with political social centers. To build his reformist image, Gorbachev maintained distance from the military and sought to blame the military in conflicts between soldiers and nationalists or separatist elements, for instance. During the Tbilisi incident in April of 1989, Gorbachev openly criticized the military for allegedly maintaining law and order, a task directed by him in the Politburo. These actions led to, the, to, led to the dissolution of the Soviet Army's program and goals of protecting proletarian dictatorships, weakening cohesion within the military and diminishing soldier sentences of mission and collective consciousness. You must recall Lenin's teachings, written on November 16th of 1905, the statements by the servants of the autocracy about the neutrality of the army, while the necessity to keep the army out of politics, are false, and such statements cannot be expected to gain any sympathy from the soldiers. Therefore, in principle, the Communist Party must maintain its leadership role. There is no doubt about that. The army must be the sword and shield of the party. No, I can't get away. Soviet army. The president of economic policy. Problems. I guess we'd secure Ukraine next. Because more political power hurts a manpower, that's alright. Among the children of the USSR, the most rebellious one is certainly Ukraine, and today, incessantly, it continues to give our union a hard time. Just like the majority of the integrated republics that oppose us, the majority of the rebels are nationals, for the Ukrainians, banderists. To prevent the situation in Ukrainian SSR from continuing to worsen, we have decided to send a massive deployment of units in the region to stop any rebel who attempts to damage the stability of our union. I'm not sure how, where we would need to do this, but... We'll try. You can sort of winish by yourself, but we definitely can't do this, so... Maybe beat an American division, at least. This is something. 
Still don't want to do any of these. I don't want to lose any MR army XP and whatnot. I hope they can hold. Happy December, everybody. Hmm. Is that moving involved in Afghanistan? What's going on over there? Emirate of Afghanistan. Do we want to involve ourselves there? I'm not sure if it'd be really worth it to involve ourselves over here. I wouldn't need like Mountaineer divisions. We don't like the Taliban because we were fighting them before, but. Whatever. Oh, Canada. Indian Parliament under attack could be that. How worrying. You know me, we're definitely gonna worry about it right now. <sighs> Good. Well, we began computerization of the economy. Under the Brosnan, the OGAS program was an interesting idea that if it would have gotten funding, could have made more advanced made us more advanced technologically than the greatest rival of the US. No Mountaineer Divisions, that's also pe quite peculiar as well. Alright, so. Show resistance stance. And Zietelmir. Kilimansky? Oh god, my geography's not very good. Anti rebel propaganda. Secure the capital. Here's the resistance. Recruit local governors. Anti rebel propaganda. Ah. And where else? Ah. Increases stability, increases resistance. Alright, well, I guess we'll wait and see. Oh, wow, you've lost a lot, haven't you? Now we have a cup of decaf coffee to keep us nice and refreshed. You're fighting over the river is a terrible idea. And I don't think you can do it. But why? Because it can easily, easily, easily pierce us. That's why. Artillery, motorized, defense. Uh huh. So what do we got here? Self propelled artillery, rocket artillery, towed artillery. The Euro, becomes official currency, the EU. We have to suffer from the purges. I forget. Yeah, that didn't help us. Till July this year? Oh boy. Yeah, this is hurting us badly.
You're gonna realize it just kinda sucks in general for now. Soviet army under watchful eye, yeah. Iron order. Stagnant economy. The separatism, militarized industry. Huh. Can I train and or disband units? Well, I already have. Consequences of fast strike up uprising and keep. The Soviet army intervened very quickly against the Ukrainian nationalist rebels. After weeks of intense house to house fighting, the Soviet army defeated the Ukrainian mili militias and delivered a Kiev. Though in a horrible state, the Soviet army was able to resist the Ukrainian rebels supported by NATO and the Western capitalists. Glory to USSR. Death to imperialism. Death to the rebels. Glory to the great Soviet army. Well, okay. What is their doctrine like? Did we choose a guerrilla warfare? I don't remember choosing that one. Did I seriously choose this one? I, think I would choose this one, probably. Is not very good. And again, we don't have air superiority either. Mm. Honestly, with all the armor and everything that we've got, I might just go down mobile warfare. Heavy infantry organization goes up. And computerization. And the civilian economy too, or industry. The civilian industry could benefit far more than upgrading the military industrial complex. Get up with many more things in the civilian sector, so we'll focus on the Ogas program on that. Expand the Ogas. Coming from the humble beginnings, the program was not used in many places, only tested in different types of settings. Look at this, too. Um, or areas. With it being a massive success, we will expand the program to encompass all the motherland, so it could help every in their day to day lives. That'd be pretty good to do, too. Nope, we are getting mollywop there. Very hard. So bad. How's Afghanistan looking? Pretty bad too. Hungary invades Romania. Oh, look at that. Troubling. Right wing nationalists. Eastern threat. This nation cannot join NATO. Eastern threat. Century of humiliation, yeah. Well, we can still send in volunteers and probably end up getting screwed up here. What if you sent them tanks? Would that work at all? A little fast that you can actually send a group at least. I could be screwing this up completely. Well, no wonder they're doing well that you don't you never guarded your line, hello? 
Guess it must have been a surprise attack, but still. Also, we can send you. Okay, I don't want to send you. I want to send fighters. Ogas, yes. Ogas, no. More computers, more efficiency. By using more of the same doesn't hurt, it's all the same case of Ogas. It is surprisingly well, helping us out and many more civilians that can thank the program for making their lives easier. The more computers, the more progress and efficiency we have. We are nearing our goal of ending the God for second economic meltdown. Still turning out more stuff, and we're doing okay on fuel finally. That's good at least. Alrighty, recon value, vehicle, sure, why not? Pash, Kistani victory in Kashmir War, oh look at that. Wow, they're a little crazy as they're attacking, that's alright. I guess if you went here, go here, go here first. Yeah, no. La Guerre wins French 20, 2002 elections? Huh. Well, alright. Well, at least we got fighters there. That sport's pretty normal. Oh man, supplies got awful here. Oi. How are we doing here? Yeah, that's what I pretty much figured. And then into the future. Oh no, support the domestic production. Well, we can do that one next. Why well, don't crack down Lithuanian nationalism? The Baltic people have always been a thorn in the side of the old mother Soviets, and although two of the three Baltic republics have seceded from us, the third of Lithuania remain strongly rebellious against the rule. If this wasn't already enough, if the ugliest disease a Soviet citizen could ever alive, see alive, nationalism. In order to prevent this disease from spreading even further among our republic, we have decided to increase Soviet forces on Lithuanian territory and proceed with a national referendum for crackdown. Those rebels won't even understand what hit them. You guys ready to move? Good old Lithuania. I was just learning how to be a panzer leader, I guess.
Military coup in, oh, military coup in France. Wow, surprising developments. They elected a communist and then cooed him. Eurozone, members of the 95 strike. How does how do they exist if they are going to have a coup and be in the EU? How does that work? Or does it? No. Well, there goes Libya. Oops, well, I guess you guys might die there. Uh, whoopsie! How'd you guys both end up here? Restoration of East Timorese independence. Okay. Alright then. There you go, nice. Not bad. Northern Alliance merges victorious in Afghan war. Alrighty. Doing whatever we can here. I'm doing this one next. And then support the domestic production. Soviet citizens deserve products made by other Soviet citizens. We'll encourage more people to buy things that are made here in the Union rather than foreign imports and bump up domestic production. Best nuts actions. Ooh. Ooh. Decrease the stability. Oh. Well, we did what we must. Actually, for the whole Cold War, for them, modify each proxy war they win. Well, I guess it's a good way to see how bad we are militarily. Because even though we send volunteers, it's not very much. It's not very good, what we do send, apparently. Alright, so what else are we missing here? Self-propelled artillery and infantry anti-tank. At the very least, yeah. Second battle of Yong... Yong Pyong? Oh. Well then. At the very least, you should be learning a lot here, right? Right. Of course, then again, the tank template we might be using aren't, it might not be very good. Oh. Well, I guess it's the old style of this. Hmm. I don't know. I was giving more army XP to get more land option stuff done. Maybe that's it, but we have very here, at least here, right? Yeah. So now I want to send you over here. 
Ah, oh, that's good. And that's what we can do a little bit of damage here now. Maybe some more organization, yes. I love it. Kurdish Independence War. Alright. Well, if we lose in South Africa, hopefully we win in here, even though it doesn't even benefit us too much. Excellent news from the Lithuania General Secretary. The Soviet Armed Forces managed to intervene quickly in the conflict and reached the Lithuanian capital where they obliterated the attempted uprising. Just completely obliterated, apparently. The Soviet Army did an excellent job against the Lithuanian rebels that were preparing for months. From the Taiga to the English seas, the Red Army is the strongest. Great. Leningrad Industrial Oblast. The Leningrad Industrial Oblast is an important part of our economy with one of the biggest cities being the center of it. Expanding the industry in this oblast will help it end the effects of industrial catastrophe that we still feel today. Cold War Strategy. Armor Giants. Ground Battle Plan. New Strategies. Force Rate. Breakthrough in Speed. Mining Strike doesn't seem like it's really new, but whatever. Professional force I do like a lot. Um I'll go with that one still for now. Let's get off some supply through here, maybe. Even though it doesn't look like we're doing very well at this point anymore. Uh, our we might have roomed. Uh, just gonna waltz in. Infantry to tank still. We need a lot of that. Self-propelled artillery. Need some rubber too. Military holding. Hey, more defense is always nice. 2002 still. Uh, sure. Are they just gonna let us walk in? Not quite, but sort of. Four. Ah. <laughs> nice. Well, okay. Invest in the capital cities. The capital cities of our SSRs and our own capital important economic hubs. They house many factories and trade. That's very present in these, all these cities. Expanding the capabilities beyond the current stage would be a good idea for them. Well, that's all we had to do was get the capital. We couldn't win a freaking battle to save our lives, but we got the capital. And that's all that mattered in the end. Nice. Welcome back to Romania, everybody. 
We're just kind of hanging out, having a good old time. Good job, guys. You can't win in battle, like I said. But you still won the war. It's amazing how that works. I don't have an artillery, artillery. Well, you can throw it at the bottom if you really need to. Declaration of Peoples of Republic of Anzania. Huh. The state of South Africa, led by white colonists, colonials, infamously enforced apartheid segregation against the majority of the black population. The system has been as in and a violent one as the ANC troops have overthrown the South African government after months of armed struggle. The new state, now led by the United ANC under the Thabo Meke, after the leader Nelson Mandela's death in 2000, has announced the creation of the People's Republic of Anzania, or Azania, seeing the old name as part of its imperialist past. Mbeki promised justice for the victims of apartheid as well as reconstruction of the country. The majority of nations are working on recognizing and welcoming the new country. ANC's borders are main backers for years. The USSR has sent congratulations to the new government for its success in delivering the country and hinting at a potential Soviet influence increase in Africa. Realized. Oh, hello. Both sides in this mod just love murdering each other. You are almost actually out of manpower, which is not ideal. Honestly, if you fall, it doesn't really matter too much. We're here for experience. Oh, God dang. This point, I think, is a good idea. Just really consolidate our forces. And try to drive home. Them. There you go. Get back up to the border, or the, the, the border, I mean river. There you go, nice. That gets, makes it easy for them to defend. Can I actually win and get it over the, oh, shnikes we did. Increase work time, uh oh. The hard time that every man or woman has work is not enough to reach your goals. For this reason, we'll extend the working hours by a couple more hours so we can get out of this depression faster. And maybe prepare for future resistance. Ah, as in the old days, all the enemies have collapsed under our boot. Lithuanian nationalists, Ukrainian banders, and Chechen zealots, all of them at the feet of the USSR. In order to prevent our country from having to spend significant time ridding itself of the scum, it was decided to increment spending on the secret services, especially the KGB, so that these anti-proletarian terror cells die even before they develop on our soil. And I already went ahead and did another focus. We're doing reunification talks, but first, the little traitors. Estonia, Latvia, Azerbaijan, and Armenia left the Union during the chaos of the 90s. Their leaders ruled the countries against the will of the people, murdering, arresting, and expelling anyone who doesn't agree with their democracy. The time has finally come that we start our campaign to reinvigorate these traitors. Reunification talks. We extend the olive branch and offer the countries that broke away from the Union the option to rejoin our Union totally peacefully. Or through force. And then preparing their fate. As they foolishly rejected our generous offers of reunification with the motherland, we will have to use our last resort option, ground invasion of these rebellious states. So we'll see what happens. So with this one, uh, the phone calls, eventually we do have war plans stalling. Oh. Uh, locked on the orders of the General Secretary Pugo and reclaimed the breakaway lands for the Union still. Stalin was uh, one of our best leaders who defended the motherland during the Great Patriotic War. He deserves to be the name of the operation that shall reclaim and liberate the breakaway states of Mother Russia. There you go. And, uh, yeah. Mm, what do we want to motorize? Yeah, get some better motorized. Why not? Let's see what happens. I'm interested because I already set up the, the front lines for everybody with the phone call. So they declined, right? Asked Marshal Zukilov. Zukilov. Uh, uh, Kulikov. Yes, Comrade Marshal. It seems that even though the population and countries like Armenia and Azerbaijan have repressed, expressed their wish to join the reunion, <laughs> join the union, the governments have refused. Answered Boris Pankin, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the USSR. Well, politically speaking, it's a shame, but in military terms, I believe that the leadership will be more than happy. After all, it would be a shame for all the preparations to go to waste. Plus, we'll get a chance to test the state of our military capabilities, the marshal answered. I believe that even if it is the case, the general secretary still needs to approve. Before Boris was able to finish a sentence, a phone rang in his office. As he picked up the phone and began talking, Marshal Kulikov was only able to hear one side of the conversation. Despite that, it was clear that either the Politburo or general secretary were on the other side. Whatever he was thinking in that moment evaporated once Pankin put down the phone. It was the Politburo. They have a new order for you, said Pankin rather calmly. And is that order perhaps related to the topic at hand? Asked Kulikov, already know the answer to his own question. Yes. Ready, the war plan Stalin. Well, I guess we're going in no matter what. Also, I sent these guys down here just because 
No, oh, Egyptian Revolution, look at that. Another revolution. Oh, what was taken by force can only be restored by force. Oh, look at that, socialist. Nasser's dream, an idealist revolution. Islamic terrorism. Eurozone. Oh, okay. So, actually, do you guys have elections still? Labor Party. Well, it's not great. It could be worse. Authoritarian Democrat, of course. Authoritarians take over for no reason. Preparing their fates. All right. And I guess we just let it go on at all times. Uh, War plan stall. And I guess... Why not? And then what? New Iron Curtain. Legacy of the Warsaw Pact. Fun the Communist World. Beyond the Atlantic. Well, I guess we keep going into the future. After our forms say what was left and rebuild a broken economy, we've done well on our mission. Taking ideas from Brezhnev era turned out to be a successful endeavor. Yugoslav nuclear development. Oh, look at this. Great. Fixing the reformist mistakes. Gorbachev has made many mistakes that were thought to be irreversible, but this wasn't the case with us in charge. We have fixed one of his big mistakes, and we shall continue to fix the mistakes until his memories erased from any and all Soviet citizens' head. Yeah, there you go. Hopefully we're ready to go. Um, tanks, are you... You're kind of all over the place. Hopefully we don't need them, but knowing our military, we honestly might. Um, Let's see what happens. End of the Nepalese monarchy. One of the oldest monarchies comes to an end. Oh boy. Well, let's see what happens. So, because we're going to go to war. Um, so, during war, mobilization speed and training time gets better. If we go to con extensive conscription. Uh, look at that. And into the future. Seems like we're doing mostly okay. Soviet invasions of former SSRs. Offload reports has come in from Estonia, Latvia, Azerbaijan, and Armenia, all claiming one thing, Soviet invasion. As of now, photos of large columns of Soviet tanks, APCs, trucks, and troops confirm the statement. Earlier, these countries report large gatherings of troops alongside their borders. The Kremlin has had enough and is keen on finishing uh, the incomplete process that started in the 90s, as now, the Red Army uh, advances deeper into these countries. No official statement has left the Soviet Union. We know the Soviet the United States and other NATO and EU countries have already prepared sanctions against the USSR, but no sanctions can stop punches or tanks. Bear gets to get comes to get what his is his. And once Armenia's gone, I'll take his guys out too. There you go. Oh. Nice job, we fish them off at the same time. Great. I hope we get some cores eventually too. We're still missing some anti tank here. Self propelled artillery. Well, let's see. You guys are still around here. You're all doing that up there. Well, why don't we just make a solid front line and call it uh, the reintegration of uh, Estonia. Oh, look at that. We have a lot more organization, maybe. Or a reinforce rate, too. Latvia. Oh, hello. Democratic Revolution in Hungary. Well, then. Shortly after the disastrous war to claim parts of Transylvania and Romania, the ultra-nationalist government of Istvan Surka was overthrown by democratic opposition by Viktor Orban. Ha! Huh. The expansionist intentions of Surka were already well known before the ultra-nationalist leader gained power, but after his party overthrew the ruling regime, his plans were set in motion. He jailed or exiled most of his opposition, cemented his rule, but in secret the opposition led by liberal Orban were gathering in secret to restore democracy to Hungary. Succeeding after Hungary's failure in the war against Romania caused Surka to lose most of his support in the nation, both from the people and the army. Since his fall from power, Surka has been charged with treason and is now under arrest and awaiting trial. The Orban government has promised to save Hungary from the edge of the collapse, no place for dictators in Europe, and the Romanian victory in the Transylvanian War. The government of Romania has declared that they have successfully defended their homeland from aggression by Hungary. Hungary has been recently attacked by Romania, or had recently attacked Romania, and bulking its claim to the lands of Transylvania as a reason for this unjustified aggression. The Romanian armed forces held the ground successfully and beat all the invading forces back into the border, with some even claiming that a Romanian army pushed further inwards into Hungarian territory. With this defeat, 
The Hungarian military has lost a large part of its hard earned legitimacy among their populace. As MIEP tries to keep the power intact, the opposition has been reinvigorated and is organizing to take power. Will Serka be able to keep his house of cards standing? Maybe. What a tragedy. Riga wants a simple prosperity, with resounding accolades now lies silent and desolate like a provincial town. Many residents have left to seek livelihoods elsewhere, and the entire country feels as empty as its un uninhabited desert. From 2.7 million people during the Soviet era, the population has dwindled to 2.2 million, but the actual number is even lower, around 1.8 million. Where are they gone, of course? They've moved to the Western Paradise to work as hired hands, picking strawberries elsewhere in Iceland, working as janitors in Germany or caregivers in England. The once bright future oriented towards the West is now bleak and obscure with former dreams quietly fading away. In the 1860s, Riga had its first railway line, its first university, and the Russo Balt factory producing cars, agricultural machinery, ships, and diesel engines. The Soviet era was even more glorious, with Latvia becoming a giant industrial hub producing everything. Trucks, pop-off radios, um, semiconductors, aircraft, locomotives, pharmaceuticals, textiles, cosmetics, and consumer goods. The largest power plant in the Soviet Union, F VEF, was located here, exporting products to 42 countries. Since peacefully gaining independence in 1991, it seemed a bright future was welcoming Latvia with a strong industrial base, significant scientific and technical potential, and a highly skilled workforce. Latvia's GDP then ranked 40th in the world, even higher than Iceland. The long-held dream of independence and freedom finally came true, but no one knew what to do with it. Independence and freedom cannot be eaten. That's like the story Pat Buchanan tells about a typical scene in classic Hollywood movies. Jack and John sit in a trench, smoking and chatting. Jack asks John, John, what will you do after all this is over? After it ends, no one knows what else to do next, and you can't turn independence and freedom into soup. So the first idea emerged, stealing. Steal the legacy of the Soviet Union to put something in the pot to make delicacies. Steal, a familiar, and beautiful name was needed, privatization, quickly. This idea of theft completely destroyed the Soviet industrial infrastructure, hollowed out world-class factories, rendering the skilled workforce unemployed, and throw them onto the streets. Those in power did the final act, eliminating those who realized that they were destroying everything. What couldn't be stolen or destroyed was sold cheaply to foreign owners. Quickly, pro-fascist elements who had been surviving on Western leftovers, Returned to claim their rights and property. With a genetic hatred of Russia, uh, they swept away everything that Russia had, had Russian ties. There are about 300,000 such fascists, many of whom are British American agents. They replaced legitimate ideology with Russophobia, for instance. The head of the Latvian Constitutional Protection Bureau, General Janus uh, Kazhotsins, or Hotsunch, is not even a Latvian citizen. He holds British nationality. This agency has unlimited power in Latvia. It controls Parliament, the National Security Council, and everything in this independent free country. But after more than 10 years of Western alignment, those dreams have shattered. People are angry and bitterly sarcastic, with even former President Guntis Elmanis cursing, Latvia crawled out of a hole in my pants. What's left in Latvia is a pile of waste. Well, the fishermen and the goldfish. By the early 2000s, Latvia was entirely in the hands of international financial tycoons. They started to dissect the small prey for breakfast, buying out all the banks of the jingling gold and establishing a central bank that controlled all of Latvia's monetary flows. From zero inflation, the lats began to, to be looted through devaluation. Foreign currency was pumped full. They knocked on every door and asked, Oh, you haven't borrowed any money from us yet? Unconditional loan, just need your passport. The populace went full wild. Life le felt like paradise, buying luxury cars like Lexus or Porsche, purchasing diamonds and living in villas with gold-plated toilets, reveling in consumption and enjoyment. Why worry? Our GDP makes even the Germans envious. A forest of Western media was singing praises about the Latvian miracle of the Latvian tiger. The Russians were envying us. We get a massive cash flow. The real estate was highly valued, a trick they've been pulling for centuries, and everyone neglected proper business production to jump into real estate. While well, the last kept devaluing and inflating far outpaced GDP growth, making real growth negative for a long time without anyone realizing it. The profits from real estate blinded everyone 500% a year, and even are more profitable than drug trafficking. The real economy, the production sector, quickly died due to the real estate profits. Like being poisoned, huge supermarkets selling Western goods drained all the cash, and the local industry and manufacturing sector were closing down because they couldn't sell products and had no money for production investments. Foreign currency debts and banks grew larger. The classic enslavement news tightened. The Latvian target now like a rat in a trap. The fairy tales reach its end like the story of the fisherman and the goldfish by Pushkin. The miracle gone and the chipped pig, Throff, uh, loomed before them again. The goldfish said nothing, flicked its tail, and dived deep into the ocean's depths. We're actually really focused on Latvia. Oh, well, I guess did we win? Hey, we won. Good job, guys. Um, here. I'm not saying we're invading Poland. What I'm saying is that our true territory lies uh, very much further west. That's all I'm saying for now. Uh, you know what? We probably shouldn't do that. You guys should probably... You know what? You guys should probably be up here. I'm just friends these guys can come here, too. Uh, good enough. Oh, what else are we missing here? Self-propelled still. Infantry anti-tank. Pretty normal stuff. Still building stuff. 
Even roads too, that's good. Improved guidance systems, nice. As we go into the future, and we're fixing the performance mistakes. Overall, not bad. So I guess we're here. The legacy of the Warsaw Pact. When we free the eastern part of Europe from fascist oppression, the USA created an alliance to dispute a newly acquired place in the world. As a response, we established our own alliance, the Warsaw Pact, that heroically defended the sovereignty and well-being of our allies and their people. But we failed, and our alliance was shattered. Now we must work on restoring this pact and freeing the workers of Europe once again. Of course. Look at what that Western influence did. Destroyed everything that we made. We're still trading ships? No, we're not. Ah, what do we got here? Fuel is okay into the future, not bad. Legacy, and then, uh, prepare for the inevitable. Inevitably, we'll once again swoop in and reclaim what was treacherously stolen from us. So we must prepare and build up our strength since the lack of planning is detrimental in this modern type of war. Poland, Romania, Hungary, Slovak Republic. Extreme planning. Plans were always one of the most important aspects of warfare, and its importance only grew as war evolved and changed. Since we are planning to reclaim a large part of Europe, extensive planning must be done before we even think about setting foot on any foreign soil. But I think we want it there. So far, not bad. It's February 4th, oh, February 7th, 2003. And we're doing, well, we're doing alright. You guys are sucking still here. But that's alright. Um, a, a lot of different nations, and we've expanded, and we reclaimed some of our own territory, including having a crap ton of fuel as well. Uh, we really border a lot of NATO. To be expected, of course. Um, so, but you know what? I'm really glad we got this, these guys back. Is it a core? It's a core state. Look at all that oil we got now. Fantastic. But if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow. As we continue on, looking like we're going to expand the Moscow Accords again. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.